Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the Design System course. My name is Meng, and I'm here to teach you a little bit about constraints and adaptive layout today. Now, working with constraints is a crucial part of the workflow as you design for so many screens today. Elements, groups, and components need to be flexible enough to react to any content or screen change. So when you select a frame, you can switch between portrait and landscape. But you can see that in portrait mode, it doesn't really adapt well. This is supposed to be centered and the logo is not supposed to be stretched. So we're gonna learn how to fix that. Whenever you create a new element by default, the default constraint is always top and left, which is why when we resize this, it doesn't move from top and left. Now we need to change this because we actually want this to be centered. So we're going to go to each element one by one and we're going to set it to center. There's one important thing to note is that when I select the entire group such as this one and I set it to a certain constraint like center, well both of the elements inside that group will inherit those new constraints. As you can see here for the logos, for example, I'm going to set it to center and now all the logos have the same constraints. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, this one is still top and left. I'm going to set it to center as well as this one, setting it to top and center. Now if you go back to the frame, you can see that when I switch to portrait, it works like a charm and exactly the way that I want it to be. The same thing with resizing the actual frame. It's really neat. I can even see the background blur that's moving alongside. Now it's nice to be able to change from portrait to landscape, but at the same time you can see that the header can't possibly be adapted because we have too many items here and it won't fit in a very small interface. So we need to create for that use case. We're going to press F and go to phone and select iPhone 10. As I mentioned before, when you're designing for mobile, you should use a layout grid of eight. So we're gonna customize this, click on this logo and set it to eight. Let's copy and paste this background. So command click here and select here and command V to paste. I can just resize it to 375 and set it to 752. Let's say. See that I'm using the grid that's really helping me uh, snap to those grids. Okay, so let's bring the text layers. I'm gonna double click this, copy, and put it Command V right here. But see, the problem is if I resize this, it doesn't resize nicely. Let me bring it back to 500. So what I need to do is to press K to use the scale tool. And you can tell by the icon right here. So you can have the move tool or the scale tool by pressing K. Now once you have that enabled, when you resize, the font actually resize as well. Let's zoom in a little bit. So command plus and let's make sure that this is centered vertically and have a 16 pixel distance from the sides. But you can see that I'm using a 375 width so that's why it's not, it's trying to go against the grid but it's not really perfect from the right side. So I can just go to the inspector and set it to a width of 343 instead. Now I have 16 left and 16 right. Now let's group both the text and the background together and name it hero. And uh, I can basically align this vertically as well within hero. The next thing we're gonna do is to bring the play button as well. So this doesn't need to be changed. Again, putting it inside hero and vertically align it. For the watch button, again, doesn't need to be changed. 
So I'm going to select hero, paste it from here and set it to center using 40 from the text. For the logos, it's obviously not gonna fit. So we're gonna copy the whole thing inside hero and we're gonna divide it in, into two groups. So let's open this. Let's take these four together and the other four together. So now we have two groups. Let's click the left align and move it right here. A distance of 40. Okay, so let's select out and make sure that the whole thing is centered like this and set to a distance of 40 from the bottom. And we have some overlapping and that's because we're trying to center this but it's not really working because we have less space. So instead of using centered vertically, we're gonna use spacing from the bottom. So roughly 40 from the logos. The play button is supposed to be a hover state using the mouse. But in this case, it's a mobile interface and therefore we don't really have the hover state so we can make this optional. I'm gonna hide it right here by clicking on the eye icon. Now I'm going to deal with the menu at the top because usually you have a nav bar that is sticky when you scroll. And let's create a rectangle that is 60 in height, 375 in width. Set it to black at 70%. Let's also add a background blur. So I'm gonna set to background blur, 40. Now the menu on mobile should be treated differently. First of all, because this is not a native app, we can't have a tab bar. So as a result, I think it's best to use the hamburger menu. Now the hamburger menu is a controversial topic. It's not as usable as a tab bar, but because we have so many items here, it's better than our other options. So in order to create this hamburger menu, it's gonna be a very simple rectangle here that's gonna be 30 by two with a corner radius of one. And I'm going to duplicate this with a distance of 8, like this. Group them together and name it Hamburger Icon. So let's center it and 16 from the left. Using distances, I'm going to set it to 24 top, 24 bottom, like this. One cool feature in Figma is that you can actually color the group and so when you do a fill it's going to apply to to all of them at the same time so color picker here and you can see that it fill both icons and since we have dark mode uh, we're going to create a, a moon icon super quickly so 22 by 22 or 24 and duplicate this with a distance of 12 I'm going to select both icons and go right here in the boolean and select on subtract and there you go so we have this icon using the color picker again getting the same color right here let's try to have a 16 pixel distance from the right okay so let's zoom out and Make sure to group everything, so these three elements, group it as menu. So with this, I can set the constraint for the hamburger menu to top left and the moon icon to be top right. And also for the background, I need to set it to, let's say top. And for the adaptive name, it's gonna be left and right so that it keeps the same consistent distance from the left and the right. So if I do resize this, you can see that it works. It's just missing 
the constraint on the background as well. So we need to do the same, um, set it to left and right. And now it should work. Another thing that I want to point out is about the text. So when you resize the text using scale, you can see that the size has become 41.2. And that's not really nice because if you send it to your developer, they might wonder about the size of the font. So we can decide to say, okay, I want this font to scale based on a percentage or something like that. Or you can also say, okay, I'm gonna set it to 40 instead and adjust my design based on that. So that's so it's entirely up to you to communicate and plan how your design should adapt to multiple devices and know your limitations, understand perhaps the CSS or if it's implemented in Xcode or in Android, you know how you can utilize uh, perhaps a percentage value or a scale value, whatever the tool allows you to do. Back to the header, there's another option which allows you to make this fixed position. So check fixed position when scrolling. But first, let's make sure that the frame is actually bigger than the device itself so that you can scroll. So I'm going to put the height to 1500. And now I can preview my prototype right here. Click on present. And here it's going to load. And I can start scrolling and you can see that it actually is sticky to the top. Before we finish, let's make sure to test this design in the smallest device possible, which is the iPhone SE. So I'm gonna click on this frame, do Command D to duplicate, and then I'm gonna set it to a iPhone SE. And see how it looks like. You can see that it works really well and I'm just going to increase the frame a little bit. So here we can decide to resize this using, for example, the option key. So it's going to resize on both sides like this. And I'm also going to resize this, the text layers to oh, make sure to have K enable, so the scale, like this, and then like this. Now we have 16 on both sides. Let's do some last minute changes. So 16 from the left, 16 from the right, and see the distances. Now you see that this fits the iPhone SE. Let's rename this to iPhone SE. And what is cool about this resolution is that it covers even the oldest generation of iPhone. So it's a 320 in terms of width, which is still a very popular resolution on the market. So we have that covered. So we've learned quite a bit today. Now you can see that my site is fully adaptive. Right now I'm using scale, as you can see it's scaling everything. But I'm going to move back to move and now it's just going to resize the width. So all my screens are adaptive as well as the bigger one. We've also learned how to use the A-point grid, how to scale elements, how to set up a fixed position for the header, and we've even learned how to use simple rectangles and circles using the boolean to create a very simple moon icon. But of course, for all of these concepts, we're going to learn more in depth later on, especially for prototyping, as well as making icons from scratch. In the next section, we're going to learn all about styles, which means that we can save this into a style or any image, any button, so that anyone in your team can reuse these styles throughout the project. Uh, we're also going to learn how to use a team library. And all of that will exist in a separate design system file. So now that we have learned all the basics and the foundation of how Figma works, we're ready 
to create our design system from scratch. I'll see you in the next lesson.